right, Peanut? This is your big debut again, man. Debut two? Debut two. Your what up? Welcome back to another video, guys. Right, hot, off the press. Harley Davidson's brand new 2023 CBOs have launched today. So It's not smart out here. <laughs> this guy, this guy brings me here to do content during a pandemic, so I had to stay safe. <laughs> Why are you wearing a mask for, for those of who, who don't know? Better not on the East Coast right now. Right now, New York City is technically the ground zero, unhealthiest air in the world. Damn Canadians. Now, now it's official. Dirty jersey for real, for real. The National Weather Service issuing air quality alerts. I got you something. I found this on Amazon. I think it's a Marvel Kid Duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's got your little YouTube mic right here. That's hilarious. Oh, this is mine. So, Peanut spent the whole last week, last week, riding, lucky him, all over Florida. So I got a, I got my good guy here a gift. Yay, can I put it on now? It's a t-shirt, Hardy Davidson t-shirt. I'm gonna put it on. Oh shit. <laughs> you have to put a disclaimer now, 18 and over? <laughs> Must be, oh, this is dope. Yeah, you That's try, fire, I try bro. to get something with like a, a logo that represents the area. That's so fire. Barracuda. Bert Harley Davidson. Perfect. There yeah. You go. XL. I'm really large. <laughs> this is large, right? Yeah. Let's see, it's not that small. Yeah. Large. LG, little guy. <laughs> little guy. <laughs> saw my video if you haven't watched it yet um take a look at it um it's just everything you need to know about the launch um and then my take on it um so the key points are in that video so check that out when you have some chance uh when you have some time but what i want to do now is kind of go in deeper and talk about what we think about the bikes and what how are these bikes going to trickle down to let's say a special or a standard i don't know if they're going to have a special and a standard next year but Talking about that and um, what we like and maybe what we don't like too much about the bikes, but um, your take on it real quick. What, what, is, what, what do you think about both bikes? Honestly, uh, when I first saw it, when they had like those sneak previews, I wasn't feeling it at all. The, well, from uh, the original, the original pictures, pictures, even I, I like, hated it. I was like, what the hell did they do? So I was like, I mean, everybody saw those pictures. Everybody was posting about the, uh, I think it was the Road Glide. It was in a shop. They did a side angle. It was yeah. terrible. I was like, wow, Harley, you really dropped the ball with this one. It was a really bad angle, yeah. too. Really bad So angle. I was like, you know what? You know, just like Harley's release of the, um, what was the red paint job with the, with the... The anniversary? The anniversary edition. 120. I didn't feel, I wasn't feeling it at first, but when I saw it in person, I completely did a 180 and, uh, is it a 180 or a 360? 360. But then you end up where you were. So was it a 180? Okay. I never understood that. 360 or 360 is all around. Yeah. So you got a 180? I like the bike now. <laughs> so when I saw it in person, so, you know, now with the release of the CVO, I said the same thing. And even up to this morning before the release, you know, we talk in our chat, I was saying that, uh, you know, I, I really hope they did a good job with this. Uh, it's a highly anticipated drop like they did with the Lowrider ST. I think they did a great job when they dropped that. So the bar was up here now. I was waiting to see perfection. So Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that they did uh, set the bar up pretty high. I mean, especially, I mean, the, the Rogue Glide is probably the most popular cruiser out there. Well, uh, adventure touring, you could say. Um, I mean, after King of the Baggers took off, it was like everybody wants a Rogue Glide now, you know? I hated them. I was anti bagger. Anybody you talk to will tell I, I, you. I was anti bagger. I was all about the Lowrider and, you know, the Dinas and the Street Bobs and the <clears throat> Baggers are for old men and now look. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, even these baggers right here. This is not your grandpa's bagger. These, these are 
I still a little bit. Performance looking backers. Looking. And ish and ish. performing ish, ish now too. Ish. You know? Because we got some performing parts in there now. A little bit, a little little sus song. Yeah. Um so Rogue Glide and the Street Glide both redesigned. Um I mean I know we're probably gonna dig deeper into the Rogue Glide because that's what we have and that's what we mostly, you know, like. But what do you think about the Street Glide? I think the Street Glide the, the bat fairing with the uh, integrated lights in the fairing looks pretty awesome. I like the way it curves out on the light as well. Like if you're looking at it from the side, the fairing, it just it has like really sharp edges and like the lines are really sharp in the front. Yeah. And it looks really nice. As opposed to the other one that was kind of like roundish and very, very dated. That's one thing about the street glide is like, it was about time for the street glide. I said in this in the other video, the road glide fairing to me, the road glide itself looks good. It, it could have gone for a few more years. But the street glide is just to me it's just super dated. Yeah, when you see a street glide, what's your first thing? Oh look, another street glide. Yeah. You know, there's nothing that really sets them apart from each other. And uh, I was never really a fan of the street glides prior to riding Sal's. I think his was a don't kill me, Sal. Uh, twenty one, if I'm not mistaken. It was a twenty or twenty one. Twenty yeah. Two with one. The, with the stage two and everything. When I rode it, I was actually impressed. You know the turning the handling on it felt a little bit better than the older models i don't know why you know nothing was really changed on it but when i saw this one i was all like wow that street glide really does look good yeah and you know after watching the video of how they designed those eagle wings yeah. how they integrated it with the headlight i'm like wow that looks good because on the preview you saw the lights and yeah. they look good already but you didn't really you didn't really get to see the the outline of the headlight so when i saw everything blend together and how they gave it that it's not so flat anymore it's it's got the better ergonomics yeah. i guess you would say on the fairing it looks yeah. it just fits i'm actually a really big fan of what they did with the street glide i can't wait to finally ride it yeah their their, their whole idea behind the lights and just i mean finally all leds um you see jerry leds you requested it <laughs> you requested it a few and months you ago got it. and you got it <laughs> they're, they're they're just their whole idea behind just the lighting aspect of the bikes it's just it, it looks like they took a lot of time into that designing it and you know trying to give the customer the best lighting from factory um and you you you, you see that both on um, both street light and broke light so both lights um obviously give you more of a, a broader uh look kind of like the baja lights do these baja lights try yeah, to it, looks like it gives you a wider range of light exactly instead of being narrow it looks like it gives you a better spread on the road so yeah you know, I, I think it's fantastic. More uh, spread, clear. Uh, as a person who's a bigger fan of the road glide, I actually would, like I said, I want to ride the street glide now. I'm interested in seeing because everybody that's ridden the street glide that I've heard at least complains about the same thing, the buffeting. Yeah. You know the how it feels at higher speeds. You know these bikes weren't really made to do those higher speeds, but now, you know, it sounds like Harley's engineering team really dug deep into these bikes and got them to ride how they're supposed to so they're, they're more on the performance end now they're, they're thinking that much um but <clears throat> i mean the video that they spoke about how they they took their time to really design these fairings to make it more efficient when you're going against the wind so making sure that you're getting rid of that buffeting making sure that the wind is going around you so you're you're kind of in a bubble um so i'm pretty sure that they spent countless hours in a wind tunnel with that stuff but um the street glide, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm feeling it, man. I really like it a lot. I, w I want to see it in person. I really do. Um, the bags. We will, I think we both agreed right away. Yeah. The bags, I mean, they look fantastic. The way they, they have that extra curvature to it, and uh, it gives it more of a modern taste yeah. instead of your traditional rectangle-looking bag, which they don't look bad either. But, you know, we got to see something new finally, just not a redesigned old... Yeah. Harley bag. Yeah. Um, I really like them a lot, and I hope they fit. Yeah. I and mean, maybe we can make them fit on ours. I, 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 so <laughs> in, in in the video that I, I did earlier, I was like, listen, like I I really that's gonna be my my number one thing is that I really hope that I could take these bags and put them on my bike because I mean the frame's the same, right? So it's they hopefully there's nothing crazy going on where they can't fit it. Whereas like hey, you just gotta buy the fender and the bags so get all meshed all together. Um, but if not just the bags alone, that'd be, that'd be great, dude. I got it color matched, put it on it. I have a feeling you know, they're not going to fit. Do a two and a one. I hope that. I, I feel like, like the spacing, spot. the spacing or something with the strut or the way they're mounted on is going to be different. 
Maybe I'm wrong, but... Well, it depends on the fender. Yeah. So if that's the case, you can just change the fender out and hopefully make it fit. But we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll try. I mean, Blackhead is doing a lot of stuff in his garage where he's fitting bags and fairings on his bike and they're doing a ton of stuff. So I think we might, you know, we, we got to start doing some stuff like that at Mike's shop too. Trying to figure it out, putting yeah. pieces together, fabricating. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work out. But the bags look dope. I like the chop look in the back. You know, it's, it's, it's something very, very popular now, especially with the stunt guys. Everyone's like chopping their bags. And I mean, I, I want those that type of style bike, uh, bags on my bike. Just looks cool. And I want to put a two in one as well. So yeah, my stretch bags need to go. Um, screen. I mean. Are you, are you mad or do you not care about the, the classic gauges, analog gauges going away? Are you that guy or? No, I, look, those gauges are outdated, let's be honest. Uh, I like the style of the, you know, having two separate gauges and, you know, if they could have updated them, maybe do a similar to the, uh, the Dakotas, maybe an updated Harley version of the Dakota gauge. But the screen, we knew we were heading in that direction. I mean, the Pan America yeah. had a fantastic screen. I mean, I, yeah. For what compared to the yeah. other Harley ones? Yeah. This is, I mean, the Road Glide and Street Glide screen, the, a Pan America screen times 100, you know? Yeah. It's more features, bigger. Um, the g digital gauges look phenomenal. You know, uh, they did a great job. I mean, I really don't look at the screen, to be honest. Yeah. But I mean, it's nice to have it. It's one of those things that, that it's, it's nice to have. Yeah. You know, the Navi and all that stuff is great. Um, it looks super modern. It looks good. Yeah. It looks good. It looks modern. It looks super clean. It cleans everything up around. Um, that's what you're looking for when you when you're going ahead. And we've had these conversations in the past. You know, when I buy, what's it? The, why should I spend money on an ST? Why should I not get the standard? Why should I buy the special? Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the CVO, and this is not knowing how the new ones are coming out, the specials and the standards. Yeah, we're gonna get into that next. Um, you know what you're getting your money. Mm -hmm. You know the difference now is I got this screen. I have this. I have that. I have this amazing 122 VVT motor. Mm -hmm. I have the, which we'll talk about the suspension, mm -hmm. um, the redesigned heads. Um, like I said, I don't the motor top end all redesigned. Yeah, everything's redesigned. Re so, redesigned cylinders, redesigned heads. So now when you're dishing out that money for a CVO, forty two thousand. You know what well, you're getting for forty two nine 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 starting. So, you know. Hey guys, don't, please don't mark them up, dealers. We'll leave it at that price. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, now you know when you buy a CVO, it's like when you buy a car and you buy something that's high end or you want to buy a basic model or a, a luxury model, you want your features. Yeah. You know, and the CVO does have, the older CVOs had a lot of features, but to the naked eye, you didn't know what they were. If you didn't know about the power bags, if you didn't know about some of the other features, the lock, um, digital gauges, the LEDs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, not digital, LED gauges. Um, you wouldn't know really the difference between yeah, an ST they, and they, a CVO. They, they have a lot of Easter eggs. For, for the person who just, oh, there goes a Harley, they're not going to know. Yeah. For a person who rides a Harley who's really into the brand, they know. You know? Um, but it's, it's it, the, the, the changes are there. Like it's, uh, I'm happy that the changes were very drastic and it wasn't like, hey guys, it's just literally the same bike and we're just LEDs. Here's LED lights and here's just a screen. Like no, like they really redesigned everything. And I, I really don't care that they didn't change the frame. I mean I think it's a the frame that's on the road glide and on the baggage right now, it's a great frame. Very rigid, um, really easy to handle those those heavy bikes around. So I really don't care about that. But if you're gonna give me a, a redesigned bike with uh, more power, more tech, um, just all around, all new. What's what, what's to complain about? It's you know, there's there's something really you know. There's some stuff that people might not like design wise, but you know that's that's taste. Um, but then, yeah. Well, I was gonna say what I liked that, you know, some people complain about. I really don't care. I mean, I noticed it was is the cooling. You know, they really dug into the bike to. It was liquid cooled. You know, get the cool, get the temperature liquid down in the bike. Cooled, I don't know. So, because that seems to be a problem, not a problem, but a concern with people is especially like us, you know, we did motor work, you get a little bit extra heat from the motor. Yeah. You know, they went ahead and um, got the cooling down, brakes, upgraded the brakes. Yeah, the big time. Piston. That's big time. 
in the rear, and I'm not really sure what they did to the front. I have to look at the video more. Well, they're 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 big Brembo brakes, um, and then obviously the rotors are bigger, um, so the stop and power is going to be a lot more. Um, what you need. A lot of guys like to do performance, but they don't do the they brakes. They forget about the brakes. They forget about the suspension, and now uh, you're like that guy from the Mighty Ducks who's flying down the ice and bust out. <laughs> Goldberg. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, we see so what suspension, cool. Suspension. So they, they the the front suspension, uh, obviously uh, inverted front end. Oh, that, which, that was a that was a must. It was a must, and then um, the back uh, shocks are redesigned as well so it's not the same suspension that you're going to find on these baggers so th these are redesigned um they're taller so that's that that that's a plus already so hopefully i mean performance wise if you're talking about a front end being done the back being redone i'm pretty sure they're going to be a lot better now is it going to be as good as let's say an aftermarket let's say as an olin's or you know uh, edges or whatever like that I i'm not sure i mean we got to try them out yeah but at the end of the day people aren't buying harley's I mean, we are, but I'm saying a lot of people just want that extra, you know, it's like a, a guy who goes by a Porsche, you know, not, they don't all want to race. Hmm. If we have it, we're going to go in yeah. and, and, and hit the roads hard, but, you know, you want to have the available lean angle when you have a more performing bike. Um, it's just there, and you're paying for it, so like I said, at least you're getting the best bang for your buck. Yeah, so better, more, you know, better suspension, that's a plus. Now what's, um, up, what's up with the the ride modes? Is it the same thing as the Pan America, or how does? So there's three ride modes. There's um, cruise. That's one of them. There's um, touring, and then there's sport. So touring is probably going to be a more relaxed, super plush, plush, probably super 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 plush. Cruising is just probably just standard mode, and then sport mode. So obviously a lot, now, a lot it, of um, now is that just riding mode or is that also performance do they have does it change so like the rpms i mean yeah so i'm pretty sure for sport is going to be more performance driven you know the the, the rpm is going to be a you know you're going to get you're going to get there a lot quicker more yeah. power the way it's going to be tuned and then you're also able to um have your own settings so you'll you also you know do like a um a customizable feature like two or three extra customizable features so you're able to add your other mode your peanut mode, your marble kid mode, you know? Gas saving mode. The gas saving mode. <laughs> if you're going mode. on a long cruise, you don't need the performance, yeah. you put it in touring mode yeah. and just enjoy the ride. Yeah. So. MPG supposedly uh, is supposed to be improved as well, which is important. Still a uh, six gallon gas tank, which is a plus. I mean, from the videos and the, uh, from the pictures, I mean, from the look to the eye, I thought the tank looked smaller and, and the designs. So I'm happy they kept a six gallon gas tank, but the way it's designed, it just, the tank looks sleeker but six gallons still, which is pretty good. Um, and then they're at, I think they said around 47 plus uh, MPGs. That's good, that's good gas mileage. Yeah, so. What will trickle down from the CVOs to, let's say a special or stand look we're talking before, because right now the, the, you can only get this model on CVO. Um, and I'm pretty sure you probably won't be able to get your hands on a special or a standard probably till maybe January to like 2024 edition. I'm pretty sure they're, they're gonna rock out with the CVOs for now. Well, what do you think about that? You think they're gonna, in the summertime, launch it out all here, just everything, or they're gonna wait till 2024? To be honest, I don't know, to be honest, that, that's a good question. I think they're gonna wait because it's just like- they, You they, can't they, just sell a CVO. Well- the, I mean, you can, but I'm saying, I, I think they definitely have the other models already set up. <laughs> I just don't know what's exclusive. Like you were saying, I don't know what it, what's exclusive to CVO and what they want to bring along to the 2024 model. Well, here's the thing. They already launched their 23 baggers. Most of the 2023 models are already, right? Yeah. So I don't think they're going to... I don't think they, they launched, hey, listen, we did a Fast Johnny this year, right? Or the regular ST models. And now all of a sudden, here are the new redesigned specials. Yeah. You know, here's the new redesign ST. They, all, they also came out with the CVOs. They came out with the CVO um, the C an the anniversary editions. That was only one, only one CVO, and that was a limited. And that's what people found their way. They were like, "Oh, why they don't? How, why is it that there's only one CVO?" Because I would feel a certain type of way that's what if I'm I just bought a CVO. 
you know, a tw in February or March, knowing that the same model year is going to be releasing a new complete redesigned model. So that's why they only released one. So that's one. what I'm saying. I don't know. That, that they only released one though, which was limited. They didn't come all of the CBOs. There, was, there, was there, no CBOs? There, there were no CBOs. This year. Oh, yeah, you're right. It, it was, was only limited. limited. You're right. So th that's what I'm saying. So if there was no C I mean, yeah. So it could be. It could be the CDO could be with this year's. That's it. Yeah, just, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So for 2024, we could probably expect the brand new redesign for all the baggers, because it just doesn't make sense for them. And I'm pretty sure that you know, there'll be a lot of people pissed off if if that was a fact. Yeah, like if yeah, I yeah. if I bought this bike last week and I'd be like, oh damn it, there's the brand new redesigned one. What well, the that hell? happened to me. I bought a lowrider, and six months later, the the ST came That's out, the, yeah. and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. And I already did the fairing and everything, so I was like, oh, I'm not going to get it now. <laughs> Thanks, Harley. Um, but talking about that, what, what, what do you think will trickle down? Because not, not everything on the CPO is going to trickle down to the regular models, I mean, per se, when it comes out. Off the top of my head, I mean, the ride mode, I think, would stay. Just because... You maybe on the ST models. Or maybe on because you have this. You have, you have the ride modes already on the sports lineup. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something they want to incorporate in all their bikes already moving forward. Yeah. Um, maybe they come with a smaller screen. Like, you know how, like, the trucks, like the Ram, yeah. you, you know, you can have the big screen and you have the smaller. Maybe they come out with a smaller screen. Well, remember, the, the standards had a smaller screen compared to... Yeah, they used to have those little... Yeah. And you uh, got, I mean, I don't know if they're going to follow with that same footstep. Maybe not, but, I mean, that's... That's what I, I mean. The, obviously, the wheels are going to be different. I don't think they're going to come with the same brakes. The one twenty two is definitely not. But I'm one twenty one. Yeah. One twenty one. Damn it! I gotta, I gotta watch more. It, it, it might be like one seventeen, probably. Like for like the special. No, no, I'm saying the new ones. The new no, ones. Yeah, so I'm saying so like so the, the special so the models one, might have a one seventeen. So the one seventeen is probably going to stay for the. They're still coming out with the STs, right? Yeah. They're they're planning on bringing the STs back, so. I think so. Uh, I don't know. I would, I would, I would assume so. They're probably gonna have the one seventeens. I'm just trying to think what else they could add to it that's gonna keep it. Well, the wheels will be different, obviously, because CBO wheels are always different. So the wheels are gonna be different. Engine's gonna be different. Um, color seat is gonna be different. The inverted front. That's what I'm kind of thinking. That what? No, that that, that, could, that, that could be something that you could bring. Mm, that the, the ST. They, they, they need to keep that because it's like that's like you that's like Indian. And their challenger, the challenger just has inverted front ends. Like no matter, it doesn't matter if you're getting the the dark horse. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the regular front one is going to come to the other models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, how about the lighting? I think the lighting will stay. I think that that's just the new staple. So you don't think it's it's just for the CBO? You think it's a new model? Unless it's something similar and more tamed down. Let's just say just the the headlamp and not the the. The, the lights in the fairing. So they said it's a uh, eagle lighting. Yeah. So I don't know if that eagle lighting is going to be something just made for the CBO. Maybe. Could be. I mean. I mean, I could see them going both ways. That's why we're just, just speculation. Yeah. Um, I I'm, I could have just assumed that it'd just be just like this one, just a little bit more tamed down, just not as, you know. I mean, CBO, CBOs. You know, it's like ugh, push. Now they announced. There's just two colors for this year's launch, right? Yeah, I was I was, I was a little. I thought there would be at least three or four. Three or four, right? That's weird. I don't know. I that, that's the one thing that I was questioning. I mean, I'm sure someone's gonna speak why. Um, so it it's, is weird. It's the orange, that dark orange with the yeah, black. the black and then the the silver color. I don't know the name of the colors yet, but yeah, I I like the silver color. If you want the orange, it's an additional six thousand dollars. Yeah. And, and listen, we live in a time now where everything went up in price, <laughs> and a paint job, a good paint job, is worth that much money. It's just a, a custom paint job is worth anywhere from four to six thousand dollars. Good, a really good paint job from a known painter. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Harley paint is Harley paint. It's top of the line. Yeah. But six grand for a paint job is like, I think I'd rather get my own. Get the silver one. My, my own idea. Yeah. 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 Um, Listen, audio got upgraded. There you go, audio. It's, <laughs> audio. it's really loud. Gotta turn it down. <laughs> it's so loud, you need to turn it down. It's so loud, you'll need to turn it down. 
that, that was that, okay. That, 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 as soon as we heard that, we started dying. Laughing. That part had me dying, man. That was funny. So yeah, the audio got upgraded as well, which is awesome. Um, I just picture one of those scenes with all the speakers in the '80s and they blow the kids' hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, the pretty, I don't know, that but damn, I'm just I want I want to ride that thing, man. I really do. I want to see it in person. The seat, the seat's really nice. Yeah, the seat. I mean, the CVLs I think always have beautiful seats, but I think they have um, paid more attention to. Longer rides, comfort, comfort yeah. actually designing the seat better with the flow of the mm -hmm. bike. Look wise and comfort wise, I think they, yeah, they, this, the seat was beautiful. When I saw, I was like, wow, they did a great job with that seat. Yeah, they they they, they really took their time on this one. And um, can, can we talk about something real quick? Because I know every everyone's like, oh, like it looks like a challenger. It looks like a challenger, you know. And we we, we talk we talk a lot about challengers. I, I, I kind of said you that this morning. <laughs> you kind of said that this morning. You did. Uh, yeah, he did say this morning. What, what what do you think about that? Well, to be honest, let's let's just take in both brands out of my head real quick. When you build a motorcycle, you're gonna have two speakers in the front. You're gonna have a screen and you're gonna have a light. There's only so many ways you can go to build a platform. Can you make it your own? Yeah, Harley's designed theirs their way. You know, Indians made their theirs way. But that front light looks like a mix of a custom dynamic light with an added LED on the side mm -hmm. and like I said from the from the previews I saw before I'm like what is that a challenger yeah so, but now that I saw it again and I saw the way they designed it the way they incorporated the LEDs on the fairing with the street glide and the way they added the wing to the they did it how did they do it with the road glide they did it with the side piece right yeah so the, the LED goes it's kind of like kind of like a wing too so it goes all around the bottom and then out yeah it's, it's really nice so it was purposely made like that for a reason, which yeah. is, it, I, it, it makes more sense. I feel like it's his own thing. People are going to say, oh, it, it looks like a Challenger wannabe. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, and I'm telling you right now, and I know, because I, I, I have spoken to a lot of people from the Harley team. I mean, this bike and these designs had been in production for a really long time. Years and years. Yeah, this wasn't this. a six-month project. They, they didn't sit down this year or a few months ago and say, hey, we're going to do a brand new Challenger and Street Glide. No, like this takes years to design the stuff, you know? So, I mean, these designs were in the books from a long time ago. Um, and even Challenger, when, when Challenger came out, that bike was based around the Road Glide. Like, it is. They, they, they took the Road Glide and they, like, they said, listen, we need to make a bike to compete with Harley because we need to take their sales away. Simple as that. It is what it is. Just competition. Yeah, business, competition. And listen, I'm all for it. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I'm one of the people who said... Uh, I love Harley. I've always been a Harley guy. I don't. I don't hate Indian. I think Indians come a long way. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you compete and you create a great product that pushes the next guy, and then the next guy builds a better product, and it pushes this team even better. So I, I love it to be honest. It's, there's only one winner here, and that's the consumer, because they're, they're both battling to now up the other, and you know, create more and sit down and, and just come up with new ideas, and it just we benefit from that. You know? And let's be honest, Harley could have came out with a gold bike, perfect, and just placed it right here with no imperfections. Somebody out there is not going to like something. Of course not. Your ordinary <laughs> Harley rider is not going to like it. You know, you know, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, that looks like an old man bike. That's a, that's a discount performance bike. Yeah. You know, you're always going to have people who don't like it. And listen, you're not going to like everything on every bike. It's, it's like the new Sportsters, the new Nicer. A lot. Some people love them. A lot of people hate them because it's just different. And you know, as soon as every time Harley does something brand new, like out of nowhere, it's like oh, like it's I don't know. Pe people's heads just blow up, and it's so you want to keep buying the same bike for the next forty years? Like, come on. You need change, man. I tell you guys all the time. You got to be open minded uh, with, with these companies because I mean, if you look at uh, Harley's history in the backtrack, like from. They created some crazy ideas in the right in the seventies and eighties. Crazy ideas of bikes that they designed that if they came out today, it would have looked modern. It yeah. would have looked, you know. So they were so ahead back then, and, and they, they keep always doing stuff like that where they create and they're always ahead. And sometimes people don't gravitate to it, so they, you know, put it back and, and they it back later. and bring it back later, you know, differently. But but think think about the timelines though. Take any five year in Harley's period in the last 15 years, let's say like 2008 to 13, 13 to 17, 
and let's say 17 till now. Mm -hmm. I think what Harley's done in the last five years is huge. Yeah. They've really, I think this is the, and you know, I'm not the oldest rider out there. I'm not the most experienced out there. Yeah, I've, yeah, been, I've been riding for about 10 years. I haven't known 64 bikes. By Jerry. <laughs> but, you know, I've been riding for about- 67 bikes, Harley Davidson. 60, 67. No, 68 now. 68 <laughs> bikes. 42 knives. <laughs> but, you know, I, I pay attention. I do research. I, I like to check history. And just from my, uh, you know, limited knowledge, if you look at what Harley's done in- you know, the last 15 years, I think this last three, four, five years, they've been really paying attention to the consumer and they've been putting out products that we want. It's been the most, I feel like it's been the most innovating time. Yeah. In their history. Like when I had my Dyna and I was like, where's the FXRP thing? Yeah. Where's the FXRT? Where's this? Where's that? You keep, you had a run of what, four or five years of people constantly putting these fairings on this bike. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. Why don't we try it? I mean, bring it back. Yeah. In a way. So when they came out with that Lowrider ST, I was just like, <sighs> the Lowrider ST, amazing. Pan America, the new Sportster S, the Nicer, the new CBOs, Rogue Live, Street Glide. Um, what else has has been new? Uh, Road Kings have been redesigned in the past. You know. Um, Even like the uh, classics, like the Fat Boy, they they did their own little personal touches that gave it a modern feel. Yeah. You know, I really think now like they're really pushing to. The soft tails all look great, you know. Be designed soft tails, you know. Even the Heritage when I bought my Heritage, yeah. you know, they did the whole black package and, you know, they made it look like something modern. So yeah. They're doing a good job. Like they I like it. All right. Probably the most important thing. Did you take a look? at the Rogue Glide bars? No. I mean, they looked... I only took a glimpse at it, but it kind of looked like a beach bar almost. Okay. Yeah, but... It, so it has a clamp now. Oh, does it? Yeah. I'll show you. I'm gonna show you this for a reason. It's a long clamp. Those bars have a 27 degree angle, which you can move them. So if it is like beach bar type of... Well, I mean, the old ones kind of had that, but it was tucked under the... Yeah, but it was very minimal, minimal. To, to move. Yeah, it had that little nipple on it. Am, yes. I allowed, am I allowed to say nipple on camera? Yeah. Okay. So it had that, <laughs> it had that nipple on You could only move it like, and then people would break it. Yeah, so th this has a 27 degree. So you could, you know, kind of bring it up. And they're nice, because they have a nice... Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, they're going to be down here from stock probably. 27 degrees, you're probably going to go like this, and it's going to give you that T-bar feel that you want. And then with that clamp, you could... It'll be easy to fucking... No change everything around. Not that it matters, because I'm not... Did they talk about the adjustment on the windshield? If it's electronic or... If they no, 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 so it's not. It's just, like... I mean, that's a fancy windshield. feature anyway. I just I'm yeah, not yeah. sure if they... Yeah, God forbid, then people would have said, Oh my God, they're trying to be like Indian. <laughs> but no. There, there's a lot of the gold... A lot of technical shit that goes into having a, a moving windshield. Yeah, man. yeah, no. But yeah, I can't wait till you know Memphis Shades or Clockworks comes out with their own little design. It'll make the, the bike look better. That's pretty sick though. Because having access now to move that bar more front. E even let's say if you just wanted to keep a stuck bar, you, you could do that now and still, you know, save yourself some cash right there. Yeah, I like I like how the vent is on this one. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It was clean. And honestly, the one thing that it was so hard working on the old road glides or these model road glides and now we want to do bars anything you have yeah. so much to replace Not that's anymore. that's the only question that i would have with these new bikes too is how difficult is it going to be to tune them and work on them and and, and change the parts and well, i guess only time will tell time will tell because everything's everything's brand new especially with that vbt now is like everything becomes a little bit more trickier but i mean that's a plus of course change your bars that'd be way easier now you don't have to deal with that whole mess in the middle, trip, you know, top tree and all that. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with the designs. I cannot wait to see. I, I have so much stuff to share with you guys, which I can't talk about right now, but just know there's a lot of stuff coming. Um, don't tell them your secrets yet. <laughs> don't tell them what's coming. I just, I, I just, I can't get, I can't wait to get these bikes and just ride them, let you know my, my final thoughts. Um, but it's, it's, we got a lot of stuff coming. And we reached... 30,000 subscribers, so huge thank you, thank you, sir. 
Huge thank you to you guys who watch me on a weekly basis. Um, I really, really, really appreciate it. Got some great content coming. We have one bike in the stable right now, but I mean, you know, hopefully keeping our fingers crossed, we're gonna keep working hard and uh, hopefully we could bring a secondary bike to the garage, to the channel, uh, for you guys to make some more content. Um, yeah, man. Anything else from you? No. Congratulations on 30,000. Uh, Thanks, man. You know, I'll tell you, this guy's the hardest working guy I know. Sometimes. You know, I like to mess with him a little bit, but uh, he deserves everything he's getting, so I'm, I'm happy for him. Yes. Spaniard! 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 All right, guys, like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. Oh, also, we're, we're going to be doing an, an in-depth review on Peanuts bike soon because it just got, it got some pretty cool go-fast parts on it and other performance parts on it. So tune in for that video. We're going to make it really nice, get some footage of us riding the bike. Um, what cam do you, did you put in it? I went with the uh, Star Racing 572 lift. That's a big cam, man. Sounds amazing. It sounds really good. And um, you changed a few other things on it. So look out for that video. That video should be out next week or so. Plus other stuff we might record this weekend again. Head down to the shore or somewhere else. I'm not sure. Kind of the shore? I mean. Kind of the shore. If it's not smoky out there. Yeah. God damn it.